Hey, before we get into it, I've just finished Tasmania. Thank you for coming. Uh, next weekend, I'm in Adelaide. I've got two shows. Uh, one is sold out. The next one's half full. Get your tickets to that. Uh, that's on Friday, the 28th of June. Then I go to Ballarat, Warnable, Shepparton. And then the UK tour starts in August. Holy shit, we've got so many more dates. We've got two London shows. One sold out. One's almost full. Then we go to Bristol, Birmingham, Manchester. The first show sold out. We added a second Manchester. Then we're going to Liverpool, Leeds, New Newcastle and Glasgow uh, and we've got some more dates I think Edinburgh will be on sale soon and we're looking at Ireland dates right now we'll see loosebeers.com get your tickets they're going quick I'll see you there enjoy the show ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome to episode 342 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast I'm your host Lewis Spears and look I had a great weekend the other weekend I went to I went to Oz Comic Con I love going to Oz Comic Con by myself. That's my shit. That's my bag. I love going to events by myself. I've said this a lot. I've said this many, many times. I'm a big advocate of attending events by yourself. Now, it appears, before we get into this Oz Comic Con story, it appears that some of you have been taking that very seriously because on this tour, <laughs> on this tour that I've been doing, Every single venue that runs the tickets themselves, which is most of the venues on this tour, every single one has remarked on how many single ticket purchases I've had. <laughs> now, I've been a big advocate for attending things by yourself. That being said, if half of you guys got friends, I could triple my ticket sales. <laughs> Dude, in Newcastle, literally a third of the audience were single ticket purchases. <laughs> and that's great. And I love that you're coming by yourself. But I, but my little caveat is, go by yourself if you don't know anyone that, would, that you could bring. If you know people that you could bring and you choose to come by yourself, shame. Shame on you. I take it all back. If you go to things by yourself, you're a loser. And you have to... Look, I'll rephrase that. If you go to things by yourself, that's fine. But you have to also purchase an extra three seats. And if they're empty, so be it. No, look, that's fine. I just think it's funny. Where the, the guy in Newcastle was like, uh, Oh, we got a lot of single ticket purchases. I said, oh, really? How many? He goes, oh, about a third of the audience. <laughs> I was like... If they brought... If like... If those people brought one to two extra friends, I probably could have done three nights. <laughs> which, <laughs> which is really funny. So, you know, solo date Spears. That's, maybe that's what I'll call the next tour. Solo date. Take yourself out. You deserve it. Bring your mum. Um, I don't know. Look, I appreciate everyone that comes. Uh, anyway, I was attending Oz Comic Con by myself which is something that only I'm allowed to do from starting now. Uh, I, went, I went to it by myself and, and uh, dude, it was sick. Although I think I'm getting, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm getting to be too well known to go to these things, which is a shame because I love, I love going to these things and, and being like, oh, look at that fucking, I could have bought that at a comic book shop, but instead I paid $40 to buy it from a convention center. <laughs> That's, that's my jam. I love cosplay. I do. I really love cosplay. I don't like cosplaying. I'll never dress up. I might dress up. I'd make, I'd make a good plastic man. God, I would nail plastic man. Google, Google plastic man right now. And you'll be like, dude, I see it. I see. I would make, and especially now that I've got a chin, yeah. I would nail plastic man. I'm saying double. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I go to this convention and it would, dude, it was, it was so good. My main, main thing that I love about going to these comic book conventions is it's just unbridled, unfiltered, unmasked autism on display everywhere. Well, actually a lot of them are literally masked. They are wearing costumes. Okay. And I, I especially love the live performances they put on at, at these Australian comic book conventions because they never put them in a place that would be good for performing. You know, I'm a performer and I know 
that in some scenarios you can put me in an environment and give me a microphone and some speakers and I'll bomb just because of the environment I'm battling against. Okay? And that's every single live performance I saw. Because at the convention center, right, on the website, they flew out like this uh, Japanese singer who I assume, I didn't know her, but I assume she sung a lot of uh, anime opening themes, right? That was her thing. She had a beautiful voice. She was fucking amazing. She was set up to fail. They put her, <laughs> right, at the convention center. I think the last time I attended an event, it was maybe some, maybe it was VidCon, I think. And they had like a bunch of people in the convention center. And then they had a bunch of speakers in like the theater portion of the convention center. That's great. So when I saw that there was going to be some live performance and like a cosplay competition where all the cosplayers would get on stage and there'd be judges going, oh, her tits look the best in that. I think that'd be good. No, that's not what I did. So convention center, picture an airplane hangar with stores in it. Okay? In it. Bottle of water. And they just manufactured like a stage that could have just been crates with a plank of wood on top of it. And then, and then two big like portable speakers that they would have spent $300 on from a DJ store. And then like a, a backdrop that said Oz Comic Con all over it. Didn't even look like curtains. And then they just stuck her on stage. And that was just in the corner <laughs> of the airplane hangar. So the acoustics were fucking abysmal. Right. And then in front of that stage, they stuck like, I don't know, 10 rows of five chairs and there were two aisles. Right. So the audience was incredibly scattered and split apart. And there's this thing that I've noticed doing shows, especially uh, like shows where there's more seats than people is people treat every single live performance like they're going to see a movie or they're traveling on a plane. They don't want to sit next to anyone, right? But here's the thing. That's fine for a movie-going experience. That's excellent for the bus or the train or a plane or the doctor's office. If you're at a live performance of anything, comedy, music, wrestling, whatever, fucking sit next to each other at the front. That's how it gets good. Even if there's an abundance of seats, if the audience isn't bunched up together as a unit, they're going to get fucking destroyed. Because it's not an audience, it's a bunch of people sitting by themselves. Especially if it's one of my shows. <laughs> you know? At least at this comic convention, even though everyone was spread out and groups weren't sitting next to each other, there were groups, you know? At one of my shows, it'd just be like 30 individuals spaced six chairs apart. <laughs> no, I've been selling out. But you know what? I'd be selling out three times in a row if you cunts had friends. No, all good. I love to go to events by myself. <laughs> Only if, if no one else can come. I think where I messed up was, it was uh, I, I kept saying my actual opinion, which is fuck going to stuff by yourself is actually better. And that's the secret the elites don't want you to know. Yeah, I'm going to Jerry Seinfeld tomorrow by myself. Loser. Should have brought three friends. You're fucking ruining the show for Jerry Seinfeld. Do you want to come? How much are tickets? <laughs> 250 bucks. No! <laughs> yeah. $250? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. How much of that is going to Israel's military? Oh, duh, don't. I'll, I'll go and I'll stand up and I'll disrupt his show. That's what I'll do. That'll solve the crisis. <laughs> hey, old Jew, I'm upset. You know they've been doing that to every single one of his shows on tour? And what's... Why would you pay 200 Then They're even having better seats. They're, they're, their tickets are probably $500. <laughs> That's true. What it's, are you doing? His venues are so big, you got to pay 600 bucks to disrupt them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you pay... If you get $200 tickets, like some fucking poor... Obstructed viewing as oh, well. Yeah, yeah, obstructed viewing. If, if you've got obstructed viewing, that means he's got obstructed viewing, so you're doing obstructed protesting. 
Free Palestine. What? What's going on? I can't. I can't hear. Am I? Is, is am I being heckled or protested? Wait, was it you who told me that Jerry? Uh, not Jerry. Uh, Jim Jeffries. Someone started heckling, but Jim couldn't hear him because the the theater was yeah. so loud. Yes. Yeah, so so it was, Jim got a really bad heckler. This is a few years ago. Jim got a hot, like the worst ever heckler. But like I could, I was on the other side of the arena. So I didn't even know there was a heckler until like an entire seating section of the arena started like trying to get Jim's attention because you're so far away. Mm. Like I've said this story before, but I, like I remember my friend, um, uh, my friend Khaled opened for Jim and the first time he did it, he felt like he bombed because he felt like most of the audience was not laughing, but I was there up the back and I said, no, you are crushing. And we kind of worked out that because the audience is so far away, you can only hear one third of the audience laughing mm. and it sounds like everyone else is not. Yes. Right? So this guy's heckling Jim. Jim doesn't even notice until, I don't know, it would have been like 500 people, which is a lot of people, but not a lot in that arena, start yelling, trying to get his attention yeah. to get this guy out. And then he starts going, what's going on? Works out that he's getting heckled tries to do something with the guy, but just cannot hear him. And then the guy just wouldn't shut up and he literally just gets carried out by security. <laughs> like they they hold him by the arms and legs. He's yeah. going like that. So good. Which was way more disruptive than any of these protesters have been at the Jerry Seinfeld show. They kind of, they go, oh, yeah, and then they leave voluntarily. It's only good You need to get kicked Jerry. out like a drunken Jim Jeffries fan if you're going to do that. Uh, yeah, I think that's it's not. Um, I agree with the protesters, but I don't think it's fucking. Yeah. It's not winning every, anyone over. No, you know, like people have paid two hundred dollars, two to six hundred dollars to see Jerry Seinfeld, be like, "What's the deal with Gaza?" And yeah, I don't think it's winning anyone over. It's like, yeah, there's. I feel like it's just trying, like, it's just trying to ruin his night, which I'm sure it is. Which he actually says, it's really funny when he responds, he's like, this doesn't really bother me, but it's ruining everyone else's night. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the, yeah, I don't know. It seems to be an ineffective form of protest. Like, there's, like, dude, I think that, like, get on a fucking jet ski and block a shipping container that's dropping weapons off. Like, yes. do that. That's an awesome form of protest. I'm all for that. I don't want my tax dollars going to mechanisms that drop bombs on fucking apartment buildings in a country, you know, I've never thought of until now. Mm. But I would, but, you know, I feel like anyone that was on the fence about this, especially like, I feel like especially like the type of person that's in that audience, right, is I think that now with the whole Israel-Palestine thing, you get into the point where, 40 to 60 year old people are the people that are like, oh no, I can't support this. But they're, even they're like starting to see, oh, but it's becoming irrefutably completely fucked. Mm. And they're moving from staunchly pro-Israel to, oh, I'm still pro-Israel, but what they're doing is fucked. Those are the people that are on the fence. And those are the people that are at the Jerry Seinfeld show that you could actually win over if you pushed them a little bit. But if you're disrupting their fucking night, they're just going to go, oh, well, I don't give a fuck. Mm. I think, yeah. And that's wrong. But that, you know, we want results, don't we? I think that's the thing. It's like, cool. You're angry at Jerry Seinfeld. He's probably a fucking Zionist dude who who goes over to Israel and he's done the whole cultural thing and has been like entangled with the military and all that kind of stuff. But like we want results, right? Hearts and minds, people. Is that what isn't that what you wanna you wanna fucking win people over to the cause so that because at the end of the day, unfortunately, if you don't own a fucking house, the government doesn't give a fuck about your opinion. You know? Like that's real. Unfortunately, that's real. It's like whoever pays the most tax gets the most say. And right now it's those fucking boomers that can afford to pay $250 to see Jerry Seinfeld 
that are like, oh, I love Israel, but I don't like what they're doing. And those are the ones that you could win over. But if you ruin their Saturday night when they just wanted to see funny Seinfeld man, you're not getting any results. So anyway, I'm at Oz Comic Con. <laughs> And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I, I heard this woman, uh, well, I didn't know her political opinion, but I was there to disrupt her show. No, but they had, um, it was just abysmal. Like she was just set up to fucking fail. The performance on before her was, I don't know what it was. It was like lip syncing and dancing, anime openings, yeah. right? People would get up in costume and they would do their dance and people were cheering and going fucking ballistic. And I hear this from the other side of the airplane hangar because there's no acoustic control at all, right? So I go over to see this amazing performance and it's just like people like lip syncing and dancing poorly. And then a real bitch gets on stage, right? And she is super Japanese. Like she's, she's like actually Japanese as fuck. She gets on with an interpreter. She, uh, oh man, I got to look up her name because she was actually, she was a fucking amazing singer. She was hitting whistle notes like she was Ariana Grande, except she actually looked Asian instead of Ariana Grande kind of looking Chinese sometimes. <laughs> Fuck, what was her name? I need to, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to find it. Doesn't matter, all right? I might put it in, I'm, look, whatever. She was Japanese ass. And she gets on with an interpreter. And the crowd is like 30 empty chairs and then 30 filled chairs. And then standing behind those chairs is like 50 people. And I'm there being like, would you guys please move to the front? I'm standing at the back because I know that if I sit there, I'm going to block view I'm going to give them an obstructed viewing. So I'm being polite, but everyone else is being a fucking coward. Because that's the other thing is when you have patchy seating, people see the patchy seating and they get scared and they don't want to say, excuse me to anyone as they walk past. So they just fill the back. And then you've got an absolutely chock of block back row and then a completely fucked and patchy six front rows. That's what was going on, except the back row was standing. <coughs> and she gets on stage and she's like, oh, konnichiwa. Doing, you know, she's like the cute Japanese um, woman, doesn't speak any English. She's getting on with an interpreter and she speaks Japanese for ages and then he speaks English for seconds and you're like, am, am I hearing the full story here? You know, you know when, when, whenever you see an interpreter, it feels like they're half-assing it because the guy will speak in their native language for like six minutes and then the English guy would be like, oh, he says, hello, how are you? <laughs> and I'm like, did he really? Like, and then, and then you're kind of just left wondering, there, wondering, being like, is their language really inefficient? Or is the interpreter really fucking lazy? And he's just like conveying the gist. <laughs> right? So she says hello and then she's singing and she's fucking amazing. But again, the audience and the venue that she's performing to, she's not really set up for success. However, let me paint the scene, okay? Incredibly patchy seating, full of the only people confident enough to sit right at the front of clearly uncomfortable and patchy seating. Very autistic people. That's it, who she's performing to. There's a guy wearing a Pikachu onesie with a hoodie. Oh, no. And he walks down the aisle... Right, standing in the aisle and starts doing the Chica dance, which is some TikTok dance that he saw. And he's doing it out of time, staring at his toes, not looking at her, and just gets through the 30 second dance, stands there motionless, and then does it again. And he's doing that for an hour. Right? Initially, I just wanted to check her out. Now I'm seeing how long this fucking. <laughs> Autistic Pikachu onesie wearing legend is going to do this one dance out of time, even when she's not singing. <laughs> and he did it the whole performance, right? There was one, because I, I looked her up on Instagram, right? She only had a couple thousand followers. 
And then I looked up her website and I didn't recognize any of the anime. I'm not a big anime guy. Like I'll, I'll watch Dragon Ball Z and then I'll watch like one of the really popular ones a year. Like the last one I watched was like Attack on Titan and I haven't finished it. Like that's where I'm at, where I'm like, oh yeah, I like it. But I prefer manga. I like reading it better most of the time. Um, but I'm not like plugged in to the anime shit. And so, and I didn't recognize any of them and they didn't seem like big animes. They were just like, you know, it's Oz Comic Con. We got who we could get, you know? <clears throat> we're not getting the One Piece OST singer. So she's singing her songs and there's one Japanese motherfucker who's locked in, clearly a fan, and he is doing it right. I don't know if you've ever seen a J-pop concert or a K-pop concert, but their thing is glow sticks and synchronized dancing, okay? Picture this. 2 p.m., Saturday, middle of the day, airplane hangar. Behind us is a woman selling hentai drawings. Next to her is a guy with a comic book store. Next to him is a dude selling foam weapons for hundreds of dollars, all right? Right in front of me, beautiful, incredible, talented Japanese singer singing her lungs out. In front of her, 60 half-filled chairs <laughs> of very tuned out people. In the middle of those chairs, uber autistic, chica dancing, Pikachu onesie wearing legend staring at his toes, spinning around in circles, pumping his fists. And then right up the back is one locked in Japanese guy who's definitely a fan of this woman. He brought his own glow stick <laughs> and he was doing the dance and he knows every song and he's got glow stick movements to every single and the whole time I felt like I was well, I was watching fucking air traffic control. <laughs> All right. He's, he's doing that every and every every single thing like she would she would hit a long note. She'd be like, Konnichiwa. And he, he would like go down low and then come up. It was like beautiful. He should have been on stage with her. It was that good. And just by himself wearing a backpack. <laughs> you know? And if you look at like J-pop concerts in arenas, fuck, it looks cool when 100,000 Japanese are doing it. Oh, stop saying that word. Sorry, I've had to instate a rule where if I ever say the C word, we have to mute it because it demonetizes the entire episode and deranks it on YouTube. That and it's, It just slips out. And I say it so often in real life that me and Keelan never edit it out. And then we go, what's the episode demonetized? Because for some reason, YouTube thinks it's a slur. It literally gets lumped in with slurs. So when it gets demonetized, it'll actually tell you why now. And every single podcast of mine that gets demonetized, it goes, oh, it's because you used a slur. I'm like, when did I use a slur? We only say those on Patreon. <laughs> we don't. I don't. Um, <laughs> hey. Hey, man, what's up? Um, but it, and then it goes, and then it goes using uh, slurs like N asterisk asterisk asterisk. F asterisks or C. That's not a slur. Anyway, so she's singing and she does a couple songs and she actually was fucking mesmerizing. I loved it. She's a beautiful singer. I, I was just going to watch it for a little bit, but I stayed for her entire performance, mostly because of her performing ability but also mostly because of the, inc the hilarious reactions of just everyone around me. That's why I like going to these things because I get to be a nerd and then I get to watch other people be like freaks. It's sick. And then <laughs> she, in between a song, interpreter comes up and she's speaking Japanese. And again, it's the same thing. She starts speaking Japanese for a minute. And, but the interpreter's English is not that great, right? And... After a few goes of her saying something and then him saying not much. <laughs> like she goes, she's speaking Japanese for like two minutes. And then he goes, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, this song is to make you smile. 
And then she looks at him like, uh, <laughs> like she's looking at him like, uh, I said more than that. And then he goes, uh, and to make you feel happy. And she goes, and then she goes, um, no, this song. And then just starts speaking better English than her interpreter. She goes, this song is to bring joy into the world and put happiness into everyone's soul and to spread love around the world. Looks at the interpreter and then goes, <laughs> and then starts singing. <laughs> She didn't need an interpreter. She spoke better English than her interpreter. It was she still had a heavy accent and she still struggled and she was slow, but she spoke better English than her interpreter, which makes me think that, you know, they just got a Japanese guy who was like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I would imagine that that speaking two languages is doesn't mean that you can translate. Like, well, is what I mean. Like speaking two languages doesn't automatically make you a good translator. Is that does that sound crazy to you? No, mate. You know that's right. Yeah, I feel like even if you're completely fluent in two languages, like that's why with books, right? There's multiple translations because there are people that reckon they can do it better and convey the meaning because you know some there's not a word for every single word in every single other language. So you just have to kind of communicate the vibe a lot of the time. And, he, and you know, she's like, not just trying to say, it's trying to make you smile. It's trying to bring happiness into my soul and make the world more peaceful through music. And that explains why she would talk for three minutes and, he would, and then he would go, ah, oh, here is the next song. <laughs> <laughs> and then like six other times she spoke, she ended up correcting him. And then by the end of the performance, she just started speaking English. <coughs> but the worst part was the Q and A, man. the The worst part was the Q and A because, again, the only people blindly confident enough to respond to her questions were the hyper autistic people up front. Like she's like, um, "Where should I go in Mirbon? Where should I go? I'm in Mirbon for first time. Where should I go in Mirbon?" And then. The guy in the Pikachu ones, he goes, puts his hand up, and then the interpreter runs over, and then he speaks into the microphone way too loud. Minotaur comics. <laughs> <laughs> and I just started laughing. And she goes, Minotaur comic? Is this, this is comic. <laughs> <laughs> like, going, well, I'm at a fucking comic book convention, brother. I don't need to go to a comic book store after. <laughs> so funny. And bless his soul. You should have a look at another comic book shop. We all love comics here. Some of us are getting paid to perform, brother. <laughs> I don't think she wants to go to a comic book shop selling shit in a language that she kind of speaks. So good. What else? Oh man, there was this, I've posted on my Instagram, this chick made this incredible Sisters of Battle cosplay costume. I'm not even going to talk about it because I know that no one cares as much as I do. Even me posting it, I was like, this is... No one gives a fuck, but I had to have it on my feed. It was that good. Really good stuff. <laughs> and again, right, because I've, I disappeared for a little bit and then I came back with a brand new face, just the unsuredness of people approaching me is so funny now. People, unless you're like a, like a big locked in fan, Everyone that approaches me is like, you kind of look like that guy. <laughs> you kind of look like that guy on YouTube. Are you that? It's really funny. I'm like, yeah, that's me. You know, you look different. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, and then after, on the way, on the way out, right? I spent hours in there. I spent fucking hours in there. I met Tom Taylor, comic book writer. He's an Australian guy writing Marvel comics and DC comics. And he's one of the most popular writers at the moment uh, in the world. And he's just a guy and he does it from here. 
I had a good chat to him. Really nice dude. Signed some books for me. It was so sick. Um, on the way out, I couldn't help myself because at the convention center, there's multiple different rooms and they often have multiple different conventions on. So next to the comic book convention, <clears throat> there was uh, a real estate convention and I had a look in there and every single banner on every single store was in Chinese. And I thought, oh, no wonder no one can buy a fucking house. You have a property convention and they don't even cater to anyone <laughs> who's native to Australia. There's just like, yep, you're the only people that are going to buy houses consistently. Come get one. Anyway, we go further down, mind, body, spirit convention, free entry. Couldn't help myself. Signed up to the QR code. You, yes, free entry, quotation marks. You had to give them your email and then they would email you a ticket. So I, of course, as is my standard, put in a fake email and then I showed the confirmation that I'd submitted the form. The woman, however, at the door was wise to this and she went, uh, I'm going to need to see the QR code that you get emailed. And I went, all right, you fucking hippie bitch, have a shower. I'll come back. Put my real email in. Burner email. Everyone needs one for spam. Come back. Here's my QR code. She went, thank you. I said, have a shower. I get in there and I'm immediately just assaulted by the smell of incense. It was fucked. I was only in there for about 20 minutes because by minute three, I had the worst headache ever because I'd just been breathing in this thick smog of incense because every single store, there's about five, there's about 50 different stalls. Every single one was burning their own incense. Fuck, dude. They should have just made it part of the rules. Like, we'll burn incense. You guys don't have to. To keep it under wraps because, it, dude, I left there and I stunk. I came home and and I, I took my clothes off and I was like, it smells like fucking incense in my shower. <clears throat> but it was so funny. There were, every single stall was run by a psychic. Every single one. Every single one had a psychic or a palm reader or a chakra interpreter or an aura understander. It was so awesome. And what was really good about it was because it was towards the end of the day, about a third of the audience was clearly just people like me from the comic con, just coming in for a laugh. So you would have all of these. So, so normally, right. You'd see someone in costume and you'd be like nerd loser, but in the mind, body, spirit convention, it, they were like the jocks bullying the real freaks. <laughs> oh, you really, you really think that candle's going to fucking help you talk to a spirit? There were, there were witches in there from TikTok. As seen on TikTok, every single psychic as well was a celebrity psychic. Psychic to the stars. I was just walking around taking photos of their stalls and laughing. There's this great photo that I'll put up on screen now of of this like like psychic to the stars stall that I took a photo of and I'm laughing and then I walk away and then I put it on my Instagram story and then a bunch of people notified me that he was staring at me <laughs> like looking past the customer going oh this guy's coming to fucking laugh at me Maybe he could read my mind. Maybe he knew what I was thinking. He's like, this guy isn't a potential customer. <laughs> this guy's just bullying me. <clears throat> there were also a lot of Buddhists <laughs> with their stalls and maybe a bit nervous, but all good. Haven't heard a peep from them since. Um, man, it was funny. There was a woman. Now their performance was actually heaps better. They had a much better performance setup. There was a woman that was there and she had been, according to the timesheet, she'd been performing for two hours and she was just wandering around going, literally wandering around, touching people on the forehead and going, I don't know what it was, but everyone who was getting touched on the forehead was, was, Started going, mm. 
It was like the schizophrenic convention of Australia. It was really good. I've never seen that many white women with dreadlocks in my life. Every single chick was walking around wearing a sari that was definitely put on in an in a offensive way, you know? So good. Just a bunch of, like, undiagnosed, mentally unwell people wandering around buying candles. Being like, this will fix me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't. Um, there was... Uh, I really wanted to get my palms read, but I was like, I'm not... There was, like... It's so expensive to get your mind read. I really wanted to do it, but they were like $80, isn't it? 80 bucks everywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not paying $80 for a laugh. Maybe if Patreon picks up, we'll go back to the mind, body, spirit. Maybe that can be our 600 member goal. That's a, that's a great idea. We're about what 41 people away yeah. from having 600 patrons. Let's, let's do that. When we, <laughs> when we get 600 patrons... Keelan and I will both get our minds read. We'll visit a psychic. We'll record it. Mm -hmm. And and we'll we'll put that up on Patreon. That's a great goal. And we'll you know what we'll do is we'll we'll um we'll ask for suggestions of what on what we should ask mm -hmm. and see if we can get the future of ourselves and the podcast told. That's a beautiful idea. Six hundred patrons. That's a great idea. We're going to a psychic. <laughs> Do you think we uh, comment below, right? Uh, do you think we we go on um, we go with al with aliases and see if they can figure us out? No, I think we do it sincerely, yeah, and see if they actually predict our future. Okay, like go in and be yeah. like, how much money will I make this year or okay. the next financial year? That's good. How many downloads will the podcast get by December? That yeah. Kind of thing. Okay. How will episode three hundred and fifty go? Excellent. That's really good. All right, 600 patrons. Keelan and I will go to a psychic. We'll get one reading each and we'll compare our findings and we'll see how accurate they are, I don't know, six months from the reading. Yeah. That's great. That's fantastic. I love that. Patreon.com slash Lou Spears. You get bonus episodes of the podcast, access to a Discord, and Keelan and I will get our minds read. We've got a video up right now that doesn't come out until next week. We've got a video up right now that doesn't even come out until next week. Wait, people, people right now are enjoying videos that you don't even know about. That's how fucking good it is. Episode three fifty <coughs> tickets went on sale a week early. A week early, and you didn't, you didn't know about it. You had no idea. Don't you feel silly, <laughs> you, loser? You idiot. Bet this guy goes to Lewis Spears shows by himself. <laughs> Bring him, mate. Um, <laughs> uh, dude. The one thing that I was thinking, though, the whole time I was at this mind, body, spirit convention was, God, I'm so lucky that my ball hair is groomed well. I'm so, I'm so lucky that right now in this convention, I've got the most well-groomed nuts of all time. You, you, you know that meme of the guy standing in the corner of the party? Yes. That's like me watching this, this J-pop singer argue with her interpreter, just standing there holding my bag of comic books going, no one here knows that my balls are shaved <laughs> really well. Thanks to manscaped.com. Now we have a code, a discount code yeah. that was not working. It wasn't working, but you know how good the people at Manscaped are? They fixed it and now it is. And our old code, who cares what it was? The point is it's what the code is now. And I certainly know the new code, but Keelan wants to say it a lot more than I do. 20 spears. Wow. The number or the word 20? The number. Two, two zero spears. spears. One word? Yes. Spears. And S -P -E -A -R -S. two numbers. E-A-R-S. Two zero S-P-E-A-R-S. Yeah. For 20% off and free shipping, the lawnmower. Ultra. Ultra. Isn't Ultra? Hang on. I thought it, I thought it was the 5.0. No. What? It's the Ultra? Like Goku when he goes Ultra Super Saiyan? The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Uh, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. That implies the existence of the Lawnmower 5.0 Normal. <laughs> the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is actually great. Look, I did my, did my whole face with it too. And my balls. Washed, washed it. Washed it. It's great. Manscaped.com 
Use code 20 Spears for 20% off and free shipping. It's a banger uh, piece, of, piece of equipment. I use it all the time. Keeps me nice and groomed. Ask your mother. So yeah, if you tried to use the, the old code and it didn't work, the, the current code is 20 Spears for 20% off and free shipping, and we love it. Um, speaking of uh, effective protest, have you seen these Stonehenge protesters that are trying to stop oil by defacing one of the most widely recognized beautiful monuments on earth with orange paint or orange powder or whatever the fuck they've put on it? I feel like at this point, after all of the times they've tried to damage art or damage monuments and all that kind of stuff, at this point, I feel like Stop Oil is funded by oil to make the whole world hate people that don't like oil. I don't like oil. I feel like it causes a lot of wars. And I feel like that we could invent a better solution if we got oil money out of politics. But every time I see one of these fucking stinky, unwashed losers throwing paint on a piece of art... I go, oh, not only do I love oil, I actually want to start donating money to fund the Middle Eastern wars. I'm, is anyone being convinced by this shit? I understand the idea of no publicity is bad publicity. Hell, I've built half my career off that. But when you get people to look at you, you have to have something good also to show them. If the only thing you're doing is going around and throwing paint on shit, I, don't, I can't find anything to agree with. They basically have gone, oh, yeah, we put orange dust on Stonehenge, but imagine if the world was destroyed by oil. Okay, you guys need, you guys need to find a, a better idea. A 21-year-old student from Oxford and a 73-year-old from Birmingham. 73? Yeah. Cunt's almost as old as the rocks. I'm surprised he got up there. You know they don't even let you near Stonehenge anymore? Why is that? Because if shit like this, I swear that it's just, uh, their thought process is like, what's going to get a lot of views and clicks, not what is actually going to help us solve the issue. Like, can we come up with an alternative energy source and then actually start asking politicians? Like, I would actually be totally okay with them throwing paint on politicians. That'd be great. Why did they do that? Why did they throw paint on a fucking politician that accepted money from an oil baron to block, I don't know, renewable energy in their city? Why did they do that? <clears throat> Why did they go out and build a nuclear reactor? You know they're going to get arrested they're gonna go to prison for that shit yeah england won't fuck around with stonehenge is it england that stonehenge is in yeah yeah near beth bath beth bath. who's beth some chick loves a bath <laughs> in bath in bath they'll go to prison for that have they been they've been arrested for sure can you search up because i saw some tweet from uh just stop oil imagine getting ratioed by stonehenge Sorry, I saw a post on X. All right. Arre yeah, they've been arrested. Let me look it up here. Okay. First of all, crazy that Stonehenge has an official Twitter. Even wilder that, that they pay for Twitter blue. Um, okay, so ju just stop oil. This is their statement. Um, the Firstly, the official Stonehenge account posted the video and said, just stop oil protesters damage Stonehenge crying emoji. <laughs> Who's running the Twitter account? Just stop oil responded to that tweet. Now they're beefing. The orange corn flour we used will soon wash away with the rain, but the urgent need for effective government action to mitigate the catastrophic consequences of climate change and ecological crisis will not. Stonehenge coming in with a big ratio, says Stonehenge is protected by the Ancient Monuments Act and it is a criminal offence to damage the stones. <laughs> there are also multiple rare lichen species growing on the stones that are protected. Expect a prison sentence, angry emoji. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my God. That's awesome. So Stonehenge is trying to destroy these people. And then the community note here as well uh, says... Uh, 
the uh, lichen covers and protects the stones of Stonehenge. Damage to the, li to the lichen will mean that the stones are less protected from pollution in the environment. Contact with the stones is limited to protect them. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I just feel like these people aren't convincing anyone. I feel like the only people that see this shit and join the Just Stop Oil people are people that want to go viral but have no idea how to do it. Mm. So they're like, oh, I would like to do that. Just a, a little bit of, of vandalism. And again, I totally get it. And, and I agree with it. I feel like we need to find an alternative to oil uh, because it damages the environment. It ends up covering birds in the sea and it causes war. Like imagine if we could find a, an, a, a proper renewable energy source that everyone just has access to, the sun, nuclear energy. And then we wouldn't have to be fighting over this shit. Did you see Bill, uh, Peter Dutton announce that if they win the next election, they'll put in seven nuclear power plants? Yeah, I bet you will. I bet. I believe you guys. The Liberals are going to build seven nuclear power plants. You know what that, you know what that is? That's them going, oh, we think we're going to lose the next election. We reckon we're going to lose, so we'll just make a big promise that Labor won't be able to do to make them look bad. Could you, could you fucking, if Peter, I mean, look at Peter Dutton's skull. If, if we, if we gave him access to nuclear energy, he would be like, we must build nukes to kill people. That guy's evil. Have you seen his head? And I don't know anything about him, but I know what, I know what his, his skull is shaped like. And normally I'm against skull shaped like, skull, skull shaped science. But for Peter Dutton, the man looks very evil. He looks like a, a villain. The guy looks like the red skull from Captain America and uh but but you know slightly less nazi-esque slightly <laughs> i think they're talking about if they do win they'll have a referendum on it why see why the fuck do we need a referendum on whether or not we should build nuclear power plants just fucking build them or don't <laughs> i swear I, this is the problem with, with the problem with legalizing gay marriage is politicians worked out that they can have a referendum over shit and then just be like, oh, well, it's in your hands. They should have just legalized gay marriage. Now, every time they have a difficult decision to make, they'll be like, oh, well, if you guys want us to do it, we'll do it. Fucking do something. <laughs> I, why can't they just make a bad decision, you know? They can't even... I feel every single politician just in Australia is just like, they're going to make no decisions. Labor got in and were like, yeah, we won. And they've done, they've done no things. They've done nothing. No. At least Scott Morrison had the nuts to completely fucking ruin the country. Labor had a referendum. Over what? The, fu the, voice. the, the voice to parliament. They've done something. Yeah, they were, exactly. Like, why, why, why didn't they just do that? And then have people be upset, you know? Instead, they were like, oh, we would like to do something. We have an idea, but if you don't want us to do it, we won't. I said, didn't we, didn't we vote you in to make decisions? Make a bad decision. Every single time a fucking party gets voted in in this country, they're like, we won, let's do nothing. Fuck it up a little bit. Make it exciting. Anyway, guys, the point is if you have to buy a single ticket to my show, that's fine. But please bring a glow stick and do dances the entire time. You know, I thought I had fans. I thought I had fans. I really did. This girl in Brisbane, she got a tattoo. Of you? Yep, she got, she got the Death Threats Don't Scare Me thing tattooed on her. That's fucking awesome. No, it's not. Bring a glow stick next oh, time, what? bitch. <laughs> All right? Think calls herself a fan. <laughs> I saw a guy go to a comic book convention that he didn't give a fuck about to see some <laughs> Japanese singer perform in a fucking airplane hangar to the most autistic people on earth and empty chairs. And he brought his own glow stick and did dances the entire time and knew every move to every single song. And he did it by himself. That's a fan. I got it. I, I bought the t-shirt. I got a tattoo. Bring a glow stick. <laughs> no, I appreciate my fans and I love them. And getting tattoos of me is very cool and very special. 
But undeniably, there's levels to this shit. I didn't even know you could do that. I didn't even know you could bring a glow stick and memorize the dances to every single song and do them by yourself, despite several people filming you. Including me. But I don't think he noticed. Where where should I go in Mirrorborn? <laughs> Minotaur Comics. Uh, co uh, comic book. <laughs> Really good, and then and then the and then the, then the only other question she asked was, "Do do you eat kangaroo?" And then a bu then a bunch of people murmured, and she was like, ah, "Okay, next song." <laughs> <laughs> it's hard getting those crowd work clips, isn't it? <laughs> oh man. How long have we been going? I've got some emails. Fifty one. Uh, I got time for an email. Listen to the the Patreon podcast. Mm -hmm. I, I just I just got a message about one of those um one of those things we pulled on someone. One of those pranks. We got an update that we can talk about on the Patreon. Did we pull a prank? I don't remember. Are you kidding? The. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll talk about it on Patreon. Okay. I'm well, I'm excited. I should sign up to the we Patreon so I know what the fuck we're talking we about. We talked about it 53 minutes ago, just before we hit record. Yeah, look, man. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I have dementia. Um, yeah, time for an uh, email. Oh, I'm going to Tazzy. Right before we do the emails, I'm going to Tasmania, and I'm going to get to the bottom of this, why, every, why our comment section has been taken away from us. Right, the Tazzy Football Club, of which I am a proud member, I'm a Tasmanian devil through and through. I lived in Tasmania. I'm Tasmanian. All right? They've, they've blocked me from their comment, comment section. And it's unacceptable. And every single post of theirs has 60 plus comments. And when you open it up, you can't even see any. We've all been muted. So, I'm, so when I go to Tasmania, I'm going to go down to the official training ground of the Tassie Devils. And I'm going to get to the bottom of this. And I'm going to find out why we've been blocked. And I'm going to demand that I be unmuted because I'm a big supporter of the Tassie Devils. I'm a member and I will not be treated like this by the social media intern of the Tassie Devils AFL Instagram page. All right, let's do some emails. I got an email um, from, uh, from a listener from Ireland, which uh, we will be coming to uh, on this tour, actually. I've got uh, word from Mitch that he's got, he's got a few good leads on uh, some Irish dates, Irish cities. And I'm not talking about Leeds. Are you going to be bringing potatoes to uh, scare off the audience? <clears throat> no, I was thinking about... Um, no, nah, I, I, I was going to make a car bomb joke, but I want to get a visa. I would like to get approved entry into the country. So uh, I think I might I might bring some potatoes. <laughs> I am. I, you know what I really want to do? I really want to buy like a traditional Irish fisherman's sweater. Apparently, um, there they've got like each type of stitch correlates to like an, an, an old family that kind of invented that type of stitch uh, for them, stitching pattern on their um, sweaters. And they're made out of like super high quality wool. And I think they're really, really, really expensive actually. So we'll see how the tour goes. Ireland's at the end. If it goes well, I'll come home with a sweater that I'll never be able to wear in Australia because it'll be too hot. Anyway, this email. The Frankston of Ireland. Hey, Lou. Seeing as you're hopefully looking to come to Ireland soon, I thought I'd give you a heads up on where you're going. By the way, if you'd like to send an email to the podcast, send it through to podcast at lewspears.com. Stories, life advice, questions, tidbits, send them through. We love it. I've always loved your Frankston tales as, as they're horribly familiar despite living over 15,000 kilometers away. I live in the shithole of Talat. 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 Ireland. As a fellow non license haver, loser, public transport is my daily torture. I've had junkies sniff my hair. Ooh, Joe Biden's on the bus. <laughs> Kids chuck an array of shite at my head and a lad collapsed on top of me as the tram was packed. On one such occasion, a middle-aged man with little, with little English told me how he'd abandoned his children in England, alluded to the fact that he'd escaped a prison sentence for stabbing someone, and knew how to hit a man with a bullet right in the eye from his time in the army. 
all with a big grin, a wink, and a slap on my knee. If you have any advice on how to deal with this kind of thing, it would be great. I'm also sure you're aware of the social upheaval relating to <clears throat> relating to in relation to migration here. So if you have any idea how to deal with racist cunts, that would be class. Hope this doesn't deter you from your unstoppable world tour here. Have a shit one, Noah. Yeah, look, you're going to have to pick one of those two things because if you want to uh, not talk to um, junkies but also confront racists, I've got some bad news. <laughs> a lot of those guys hold hands. Um, yeah, look, I'm very lucky because I'm so unbelievably huge. And Keelan's also a very big person too. Like, what are you, 6'4"? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I'm 6'8", Keelan's 6'4", and Keelan's a lot bigger than me. Like, he looks stronger than me. He's not. But he oh, looks str faster than you in the pool. In the pool, okay? On land, I'll dust you. Actually, you probably smash me on land as well. Look, <laughs> the point is, if we were bench pressing, I could do more. And that's a, <laughs> that's a real gentleman's fight. The, I, we might not be the best people to ask because people just instinctually leave us alone. But head down, look at the shoes. That's what I, that's what I always think. Look at my shoes. Not their shoes because then you'll incite something. But I don't know. Sit near the driver. It's a really hard one when I don't know the size of you. If you're a small guy, might be time to get that license, dude, because unfortunately these people, I see it all the time, they pick on small people because they know that will make them feel tough. It's like how I told that story of how, how I almost got robbed in Perth. Like the only, the only reason nothing was attempted was because I was bigger than that guy and he was really big you know so if you're a small guy you know and you're constantly getting harassed and approached on public transport it might be time to get that license you know i'm comfy because i'm huge so i never have i do sometimes but there's always that like thing in the well, i see it in them in their in their expression like whenever even if an insane crackhead or some fucking violent loser I see them size me up and I see the like the reptile brain be like, who's big? Oh, you might lose this one. And I think that protects me from a lot of shit in my life. Massive unit privilege. And now I've got pretty privilege too. So if you're a short little ugly Irish freak, <laughs> I can't help you, Noah. Um, no, you gotta get you gotta get your license, dude. It sounds like uh, it sounds like violence is uh, is in your future. If I was a psychic, I, I would be thinking violence is is. I see violence in your future. You need to you need to get that that license. Is the public transport in Ireland as good as it is in Melbourne? Probably. I don't know. And if you want to deal with racists, I don't know. I'm not sure. You could. Um, you could, you could, you know what would, you know what would, would really work, I feel like. Say, say, say there's like an, an anti-immigration rally in your area, right? What you should do is stand in their path with a glow stick and start dancing. And hopefully you'll mesmerize them. You might even hypnotize them and you could be like Irish Pied Piper with a glow stick. And you could dance them, right? Because Ireland, it's, you know, it's close to other countries. If you could mesmerize them with your glow stick dancing and dance them towards another country, then you could stop dancing and inform them that they've actually turned into immigrants themselves because they're in a different country. Then they'll begin to kill each other and themselves. And that's how you solve the problem. I hope that's been helpful to you. Guys, we're going to continue on Patreon and Patreon, and I can't wait to find out what we were talking about before I started this episode. Um, when we get 600 patrons, that's great. Keelan and I will get our minds read by a psychic. Two different readings, and we'll figure out how to spice it up. That's going to be awesome. We're 41 patrons away, so if, you, if you've been on the fence, now's the time. All right? If, if, if you came to my show by yourself, and in hindsight... 
thinking about it, you probably could have invited a mate. Your penance is signing up to the Patreon <laughs> to support the show. All right. Uh, I'll see you uh, on tour, loosebeers.com. I'm going everywhere. I can't wait to see you. And I'll uh, talk to you next Sunday. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.